So once upon a time, we were at a realtor's open house. We were gonna bring her a free cutting board, let her see what it was like to be gifted one, and then ask for sales later. But when we got to this open house, it was stupid busy. There were cars lined up and down both sides of the street. We didn't even bother going in, but we noticed that this realtor had amazing marketing and branding. Literally her car was wrapped in her branding. And it wasn't one of those like super cheesy, like car wrappings. It looked really, really nice. This might be somebody that we really want to partner with. I don't know, do you ever just have a really good feeling about a customer? Like, like in your gut, you can just tell that they're gonna be somebody good to work with. That was this realtor. So I decided to mail her a board instead. We'll see what happens. So then I get a phone call the day her board was delivered and she was so appreciative. Cause believe it or not, some of these realtors will send them this free board and we never get a call back or a thank you or an acknowledgement or anything. So despite her absolutely loving the board, we still didn't see any orders come in from her. So on the phone, she had left me an open invitation to come visit her new office, but I didn't wanna go empty handed. So I decided to bring her a charcuterie board because I didn't wanna give her like a second cutting board. She already had one. So I just decided to bring a charcuterie board with me. But the time I showed up to her office, she wasn't there, which is just my luck. So I wrote her a note on a little sticky notepad, left it on the board, put it in her office and went home. And then that night, <laughs> I got a phone call back from her. She felt so bad. She was almost in tears. She called me and she said, the reason I wasn't there to meet you this afternoon is because I was out buying gift cards as closing gifts for a closing I had coming up. There you were standing in my office trying to solve my problem and I was out buying gift cards and I hate using gift cards as closing gifts. So right there on the phone, she asked to order 10 charcuterie boards. All we had to do was reel her in and then I messed up. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. So this week, in order to not run out of charcuterie boards, because stock was dangerously low, Eric and I had to make a ton of charcuterie boards. We were not expecting to have to make charcuterie boards anytime soon. I mean, we made a batch a while ago, but we were not trying to sell them. But Jenny's new friend has been ordering so many charcuterie boards that we just had to do something. So all in all, we made about 85 boards, took us about two working days to build them, and uh, yeah, should be a little over $8,000 in sales once we sell them all. So we never intended to sell charcuterie boards to realtors, only the cutting boards. So when she asked me for 10 charcuterie boards, I messed up by miscalculating the price for that many. We're still making a profit on the boards, but proportionally, it's not near as much of a profit as we're making on all of our other products. So I wrote it off as a mistake. I just said, hey, it's one of the first sales I've ever made. Like, it's okay. I figured out the pricing structure after that, so I know what to quote people in the future, but I had to move on and do other things because after all, we're still running a business in the background. We're donating things to auctions. We're looking for new customers. We're talking to other realtors at the same time. I can't focus on one thing for too long. So about a week later, Jenny went back to this realtor's office to deliver a board that she she had ordered, she gave her seven more names for seven more boards, which finished out her initial order of 10. And then she asked to buy 20 more right there on the spot. And she was bragging to her friend in the room about how she was getting a discount by ordering in bulk. And I wanted to scream twice. Once because I was so excited that she had just ordered 20 more boards. And second, because I was so angry that I had screwed up the pricing on these. 
I can't raise the price. If anything, I should be lowering the price because she's ordering more in bulk. So I took the order, gave her the price that we had originally agreed on for the previous 10 board order. I had no idea that her Ferris wheel moved so fast. All right, so we talked about this a long time ago in a video, but there's this concept in sales called the Ferris wheel of sales. Basically, every customer that buys from you is getting on a Ferris wheel. Most people take one lap around the Ferris wheel, they get off and you never hear from them again. But some customers, they get on the Ferris wheel and they wanna keep riding it. Every time their cab comes to the bottom, they buy a new product from you and they go around again. And how often they buy from you is how fast their Ferris wheel goes. It might be a couple weeks between their purchases, it might be a few months, it might be just once a year. And you really only need 20 to 30 buckets on your Ferris wheel of customers buying from you repeatedly before you're busy year round. If your Ferris wheel gets full, you always have a consistent stream of income. And as a one or two person shop, 20 people will fill you up for the whole year. So knowing this, we realized very quickly that Jenny's new realtor friend, her Ferris wheel run around, her Ferris wheel run around, her Ferris wheel run around, her Ferris wheel went around really, really fast. Now don't get me wrong. I am so grateful that we're making repeat sales. That's not why we're upset, but we want to have eight Ferris wheels with 30 cabs each. We want this business to run smoothly with a ton of customers. If you want your business to grow, you have to operate as if it's bigger than it actually is. But you also have to respect the level that you're on right now. And that's a really tough balance to achieve. So the biggest lesson we learned in all of this is kind of ironic. It's when we say all the time, don't lowball your prices. It is so much easier to discount later on and price high in the beginning then discount at the beginning and have to raise your prices later. We hear people say all the time, oh, I'll price higher once I get better, or it's fun for me, so I don't care about making a huge profit. But you're setting your future self up for failure because when word gets out about your amazing work, which spoiler alert, it will, you're not gonna be prepared for a hug of death where you get a ton of orders. The hug of death is what kills businesses. When you get a big line of people all at once to ride your Ferris wheel, if you're not prepared to put them on, you're gonna fail because you're not gonna be able to take their order. You're gonna have delays in shipping your product and the customer's gonna be upset about their experience and they're never gonna buy from you again. It's literally what kills businesses. That's why they call it the hug of death. And that's the standard by which we're judging ourselves is could we do this at scale? No, okay, then we fail. So for those of you playing at home, it is so much easier to lower your prices if needed rather than raise your prices after a few sales. So price high and temporarily discount as needed to keep your cash flow moving. So subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the player, stick to the player, ask me how